हेलो फ्रेंड्स नवीन सी 1579 द ईयर 1579 इसे लैंडमार्क ईयर फॉर अस वाला सिंगलिश रिटर्निंग क्रिटिसिज्म इस कंसर्न व्हाई डू यू नो जस्ट इन दैट ईयर वन मिस्टर स्टीफन गोसोन स्टीफन स्टीफन गोसोन he published school of abuse school of 16th century spelling has school of abuse don't don't think that i have made a i have made an error for you to laugh now this is 16th century spelling so also the title here apology so apology and apology for poetry now 15th century it was this landmark gear because he published this under the He explained the title. Uh, there is an explanation of the title. That is, he wrote like this: "It is a pleasant invective, in an invective." He said, "School of abuse is a pleasant invective, invective against poets, poets, just against poets, papers, justices, and their players." So that is these people. Means all of them are, all of them are uh, concerned with the finance. No? Yes. So he said that they are uh, invective is abusive language. So these people are all they are creating problems. So they are uh, uh, immoral people, or they are teaching. Uh, they are they are uh, they are teach, their teachings are against morality. Don't say moral people. That will be too bad, too much. No. So we say say against morality. They are not teaching virtues and so on. Understand that? And uh, he he also got support from Plato. That is by chance, you know, Plato had once said that he should uh, we should banish poets from the Republic because they tell all, all kinds of lies. So poet is mother of all lies. You know, that's what people say. That is that is the kind of you know what we must say is. Uh, A kind of a, a feeling, you can say, not not a fact. It's a feeling. Yes. Now, what happened is that against this, of course, being a poet, he was self-interestedly was a poet. He was a scholar, a Latin scholar. He was a soldier. He was a, a scholar, poet, soldier, and also he was a much traveled person. And he was also a courtier, so he was well educated, learned man. So he thought that it is his duty to defend poetry. That is, so he wrote a defense. Apology means defense. You know, you have heard of apologetic fathers of the second century, like Origen and so on. So they are apologetic means not saying that I beg your pardon, not not that, but that means defense. Defending. So here you see he wrote a defense. D E F E N C defense, or you can say D E F E N S C defense. So this is um, S C is American spelling, and C is British spelling. Defense. So apology here means defense, defense for poetry, because he himself was a poet. His uh, sonnet cycle, Astrophe and Stella, second only to Shakespeare's sonnet cycle in the Elizabethan period. So, so famous it was. No? And then what happens is that uh, he has to defend it. This is duty. This is uh, because himself is a poet. Suppose uh, the, somebody attacks a teacher, then the teacher has to defend it, defend himself. No? So this is a kind of self-defense. But This it provides a compendium of knowledge, encyclopedia. I should say. If you go through the pages of apology for poetry, you will see the argument how it has been systematically done. I am quoting examples one after another from Greek history, from Roman history, from England itself. You can see that. Understand? So if you read, you know, it is a kind of I must say that it is a. You will have the experience of going to turning the pages of an encyclopedia. To that extent, I can say. 
Now, what did he did to us, you know? He said, uh, this is an introduction, you know, please, you will get into it later. He said like this, he said, uh, apology for poetry, a defense. There are some poet whippers, he said, or poet haters. So he called, he calls Stephen Gosson and people like him, poet whippers. Whipping, you know, whipping. So they are poet whippers. Poet whippers. And poet haters. The poet whippers or poet haters. They are loaded with negativism in their brain. Their brain is loaded with negativism. So that, and they are very pessimistic people. They don't find any good in anything. Even in poetry. Even in poetry, that is what we said, uh, poetry teaches as well as delights. As uh, Horace has said, utile et dulce, or dulce et utile. Dulce means delicious, sweet. And utile means utility, it's useful. It is useful as well as it is delicious. Right? Such an art, these people like uh, Stephen Gosson said, Oh, it's all mother of lies. It will only be, it will only lead the young mind from the uh, young mind from the normal way of life or the moral way of life, the morality. So that's what it says. And therefore, he said, it's my duty to defend. And he calls these people poet whippers or poet haters. These days there are some women. In the, in the essay, as you go through, you, you will find that. This is what his own statement is, there are some women. See that? What do they, they are good people, but what happens is, they often are sick. They are with pain, back pain, headache, and then uh, tears from my eyes, and they are often very sick. But in fact, they cannot tell. These are exact words of Philip Sidney in that essay. They are very often sick, but they cannot tell what is their sickness. So this Stephen Gerson and people like that, poet people are like that. Their brain is loaded with the negativism. They can't find any, anything good in anything. It's like pessimistic people, you know, they say, <coughs> the heart, the, the um, <coughs> glass is half empty. You know this. And when the optimistic people say the glass is half full. Or you say this way, you know, that the attitude of this man is very important. That's what I am in the beginning introduction self. I am trying to impress this thing upon you. And uh, some people you know they will say that the, the door is half open. Then some others will say pessimists will the pessimist will say the door is half shut. And you see, you look at the sky and there's a Oh, what a beautiful, shiny day. Then somebody will say, Oh, there are some clouds here. That day. <laughs> so there are people are like that. You know. It's a kind of humor. Humor is not uh, what they say for laughing, but for humor, you know. You know, sanguine, then uh, color sanguine means always happy and uh, very enjoyable type of people. Then uh, usually they are very fat also. Then secondly, choleric, very thin and very angry people. Then there are what is called phlegmatic people, very slow moving, no? there is phlegmatic. And melancholic people, melancholy. So melancholy, so melancholia, so to say, it is, it is something like that. People are born like that, with that humor. Understand? That? So in ancient Greece, the uh, theory of humor, so people used to be uh, classified like this, very happy type of people, angry people, then uh, angry people are lean and thin. You know? Now, I don't want to get into the theory of humor, but just, just uh, by chance, uh, I was thinking that, thinking about this Gerson, Gerson might be a very thin person, and a type of angry plus melancholy, <laughs> that is the type of person he was. Understand? So he had to defend it, and he defended it like this, he said, Poetry is three in one. Three in one. The poetry, the, you have got the precepts of philosophy. 
three in one. I was writing down the board for you. So because this is the base, the, the foundation from which we have to build this edifice of apology for poetry. So he says it is three in one. Poetry is three in one. When you have got the precepts of precepts, or that is principles of philosophy in it. See? And uh, Horace, Aristotle before him, and the later critics, they are all affirming the fact that poetry teaches universal truth. That is. In the Rick Ballads, you find that poetry teaches universal truth. What appeals, Lanjana says, it is the universal truth, universal appeal. So, all these critics, before and after Sydney, repeat the same. So, philosophy. And secondly, you will find in poetry examples from history. Examples from history. You have Macbeth, not a history, but folklore. The character Macbeth is in the folklore. All, the, all these people. You will find kind people, cruel people. You will view this, all these writers, they have uh, written about characters appearing in folk, folklore. King Cyrus, just and human, just and kind. He was very kind to those people whom he conquered. Such people. Aeneas, Virgil's Aeneas, Aeneas, you get no? Aeneas, the virtuous person, the person who was so faithful and loving towards his father. He carried his whole father on his back when the city was in ruin. He did not escape himself, but he carried, and that is a great example. It is, it is an example for all those people who today, these days, I am sorry to say, throw their parents in old age homes and leave the country in search of jobs and pressures to foreign countries. I, I told him, I am very sorry when I mention such kind of things. So examples from history, yes, examples from history. And then, and he uses, the poet uses all the pressurable, pressurable, uses all the pressure devices of art. Devices of art. Then how can you say? Poet is a monarch. Poet is a monarch. Poet is a monarch. He's a king. That's what he says. And what did the Romans call the poets? Watchers. Romans call the poets watchers. Watchers means prophets, diviners, foreseers. Those who see in future. Prophets predicting. Watchers. And what about the Greeks? The Greeks call them poiein. Poiein. That means maker. He makes. In the words of Aristotle, uh, Aristotle, image making and image shaping faculty. He creates something. He creates something new. The historians will say history tells you about forensic matters. Something that happens. Battle of Plassey in such and such year. India became independent in 1947. Like that. Nothing more than that. Just facts. That of philosophy. When you say philosophy, when you talk, when you, the moment you hear the name of philosopher, you become very serious, right? Philosophy. Actually, the meaning of philosophy is love of wisdom. That's all. Because philosophy, the word is philia. Philia. Philia means love. Love. Philanthropy comes from that. Philanthropy. Anthropos means man. Philanthropy, love of man. Philia. Sophia. Sophia means wisdom. Sophia. Sophia. Sophis. You have heard of Sophis. Wise men. Philosophies. So, philosophy just means love of wisdom. When you see philosophy and moral philosophy and so on, you, you feel like you are a foreigner will get wrinkled. Moral philosophy, something very serious is coming. Isn't it? You have got nursery rhyme. 
Do you have nursery philosophy? You have got nursery history, nursery politics, nursery economics. So it is poetry is the poetry is the first softest knowledge that you administer to a child. Listen, how important is that? It's the nurse and mother. He says, in the essay he says, we will see that in detail, but as an introduction, what is inside that we know, we should know. A kind of what we, what uh, we can think of this, an outline. If you know, you are, you are going to end, you are going on a, a trekking, you are going for trekking. Then it's a forest. So you have to go through a forest. If you know something about that, then what happens is easy, your journey will become easy. Like that. I'm not giving the whole thing now. See, poem is this. So, all those people who have walked through or along or in the Apollo's garden, what's the thing? Apollo's garden. Apollo. You know Apollo, isn't it? Apollo. Apollo's lair. Elvayari, music dancer, Apollo. God of poetry. All of those who have uh, passed through or walked along, walked inside the Apollo's garden, there are people who are, who taught and pressurably taught the most important precepts of life. Understand that? So they should not be condemned. Poet weepers and poets haters. You mind your business, he says. Very strong and vigorous defense of poets by Sir Philip Sidney. That's why they hardly he lived 32 years. Suppose he would not live further one. And so we have got, remember he, the, he has rightly earned the title of father of English criticism or father of English English critical theory if you want to say put it like that so that's one thing that you should must know yes rightly in the title father father of father of English criticism criticism that's the thing father of criticism understand and then he was the one who inaugurated, what you can say. He was the one who made or started, or you can say he was the one who encouraged poets to become critics. And so we have got his example. And so we have got an array of, a line of, a very eminent line, a line, a very eminent line of, or array, a r r a y, array of poet critics. To begin with, you have Sir Philip Sidney himself, you have John Dryden, Pope, Alexander Pope, and uh, Wordsworth, Shelley, and you have uh, the Romantic critics, Wordsworth, Shelley, and you are further and you go, you will find uh, um, in the Victorian age, you know, uh, Matthew Arnold, yes, Matthew Arnold, and also they come to the great G.S. Eliot, tradition and the individual child. So you have got an array of poet critics. The tradition of poet, poet critics begins with the Sir Philip Sidney. So he is father of English literary criticism. English literary criticism. Literary criticism. And also, the Earl Duke, he is the, he is the, the one who started this tradition of poet critics in English. He said poetry is sweet food of sweetly uttered knowledge. That's what he says. Poetry is 
quoting them poetry is sweet food. Sweet food. The word sweet food. Of sweetly uttered knowledge. Of sweetly uttered knowledge. So I hope now you got an idea. He is a poet is a monarch. Yes. And at the same thing he says, mere rhyming and versing will not become, will not make one a poet. No. Just rhyming and for example, if you say if you write poems like this, Hamdi uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water, you write hundreds of them, but that's not that's only rhyming and versing. We are a second thing. You cannot say they are poems. They are just simple nursery rhymes. Understand? Or if you say like this, Peter Piper picked a peck of pepper. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pepper? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pepper, where is the peck of pepper? Did Peter Piper pick? So you, you have about rhyme and verse and everything. So that's not a poem. You cannot say that is a one who has written that is a poet. Says rhyming and versing alone will not make someone a poet. Then what is required? What is required is you have what is required is your image making and image shaping faculty and also the ability to ability to what is it? Do utility at Dulce. Or in the words of Horace, should be a speaking picture. Should be a speaking picture. Or as Lanjana says, it should move you, transport, a feeling of transport, sublime. Only then that piece will become a um, poem. Something created. Poet creates. Understand? So these are some of the ideas that is that you will find when you enter into the treatise or essay. The apology for that. Difference, it is very strong. So just I will sum up what I have just said. 1579 is a landmark here because uh, Stephen goes on, published. School of Abuse, an invective against poets, papers, justice, and uh, uh, and uh, players. So himself was a poet, Sidney was a poet, and uh, he wanted to defend it. He defended it like this saying, first of all you are poet vipers and poet uh, haters. You have no reason for that. Just uh, some women complain that they are always sick. What do you call in a psychosomatic diseases? The psychosomatic disease. Because so you feel that you are sick, but you cannot say where, what, exactly, you cannot point out. Many people suffer from that. He, he says like that, then he says that poet is a monarch, poet is a philosopher, poet is a historian, poet also uses pleasurable devices of art. Poets teach as well as give pleasure. As ultimately, as Aristotle said, the end of an artist's emotional delights or rational pleasure. The only, the only art the, that gives, that teaches with pleasure, combating, comparing the philosophy and uh, history. Because that comparison you will find here in the essay also. So, say so that that is poetry. Says Apollo's garden is the most glorious place for people to thrive. People with the uh, imagination to thrive. These people, others, they don't have imagination. Philosopher doesn't have an imagination. He just explains things. And historian, historian tells you what has happened at what time, who did it. Is it? He, he even doesn't say why. Because why is answered by philosopher. Right? Yes. The question why is answered by philosopher. The question when is answered by, when and who is answered by, questions are answered by the historian.
But here he invents something. Creates. Romans called poets vatas, means prophets, diviners. And the Greeks called the poets poian, means maker. This is poetry is sweet food of sweetly uttered knowledge. It's not the mother of lies, but it is the mother that the mother that teaches the tender ones. It is not the mother of lies, it is the nurse or it is the mother that teaches the tender one with pressure. Understand? So, this is by way of introduction I have told you. Then, from, from my next, next lecture on this, we can expect some 14 lectures. Small, so I have, the timing I have arranged in such a way that not even a single lecture should uh, exceed 20 minutes or maximum 25 minutes. Understand? So for the, for YouTube, so I want uh, as uh, mother uh, mother gives or mother gives milk to the baby. You know? I want to just explain this to you in a soft way, so that we both enjoy, teach, and you have have the pleasure. I also have the pleasure of teaching and also the pleasure of explaining these things. So, to we meet for the next lecture? Bye. Have a nice time. Enjoy your life. Understand? Because after all, end of, what is the end of fine art? It's pleasure. So what is the end of life? It's also pleasure. There will be a lot of shadows and clouds and all those things in life. But you don't worry about such kind of things. You simply enjoy your life. Okay. Bye.